Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Thomas, uh, or Tomasz, uh, originally. Uh, um, and everybody, welcome to the uh, AWS Discovery Day, Strategies for the Large Scale uh, Data Migration. So, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, my name is Thomas. I'm originally from the Czech Republic, but I'm a big fan of traveling. So uh, I'm, you know, always traveling the world. You can always find me in a very different places uh, around the world. Uh, when it comes to AWS, I've been around AWS world for maybe about a decade, uh, working on or consulting on various projects for various clients. Uh, when it comes to migration, maybe one experience uh, to point out, uh, I helped one of the largest banks in Europe to migrate to, to AWS. Uh, so definitely, uh, I will be telling you something uh, about my personal experience, uh, maybe some helpful tips and tricks uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to migration. Uh, should anybody wish to uh, connect with me, stay in touch. Uh, you know, if uh, if anybody has maybe some uh, questions or um, in general, I'm a big AWS geek. Uh, so if anybody wishes to uh, to continue our conversation uh, about uh migrations in aws or any aws um, related topic uh definitely find me on linkedin uh there's the qr code that should lead you uh to my linkedin profile uh and i will be very happy uh to uh to stay in touch and talk about anything aws related so uh that's how you can find me uh anyway i know everybody is very busy so i do not want to uh take much of your time uh for uh you know breaking about myself uh, it is definitely not the point of this webinar, uh, but uh, here we're going to talk about migrations. Uh, so why don't we actually start first? Wh wh why do company migrates? You know, why why would anybody want to uh, go through this uh, usually very complicated journey uh, migrating to to uh, AWS? Uh, what I see customers here most frequently, so I definitely have to start with that, is the cost reduction. Uh, so it's kind of like the ideal uh, that you know everybody wants to save money right nowadays. The, the IT budget is very tight. So how do I save money? Well, I've heard the cloud is pretty good. Uh, let's go to cloud and let's save some money. Uh, let me tell you, is it possible to save money by migrating to cloud? Absolutely, it is. Uh, I've seen many clients. I work with many clients that were able to achieve a very interesting uh, cost savings. However, I also have to point out that you know. Does it guarantee you by migrating to cloud that you will always save money? Is it is cloud some magical place that you know you just turn it on and you automatically save 20, 30, 40, 60, 70 percent uh, of your budget? Unfortunately, I've got a bad news. It's not. So cloud is a great place. It has a potential uh, to be very cost effective. Uh, however, we need to do the right things. Uh, we need to architect our solution so we're able to achieve some cost saving. Uh, just plain migration doesn't guarantee us uh, anything. So definitely keep 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 that in mind. Don't be surprised, you know, maybe in some initial time period, uh, it might be even a little bit more costly uh, than it used to be to run on-prem facility, on-prem environment. But definitely, uh, if you architect things um, correctly uh, in a cloud, uh, there's a, there's a great great potential for some cost saving. However, I had to start with cost saving because that's usually what uh, everybody focuses on. But cost saving is definitely not the uh, the biggest or the most important uh, migration driver. Um, usually, companies are interested in migrating uh, to cloud to improve the overall productivity and enable a digital transformation uh, and uh, innovation. Uh, we'll be talking about cloud, the flexibility of the cloud. Uh, what cloud can bring us, what cloud can offer uh, to us. So usually at the end of the day, by uh, utilizing the cloud, by being more innovative, by being more agile, by being more flexible, um, you know, by, by having the ability uh, to start offering better products and services for our customers, usually we achieve much more uh, than just plain uh, cost reduction and cost saving. So usually this, uh, in the end, um, typically is the, the most important uh, migration driver. Uh, sometimes we simply have to uh, consolidate our data centers. You know, we're running out of capacity, so we got to go somewhere. 
that might be interesting. Maybe our contract uh, is about to expire or our lease uh, is about to expire. We do not want to manage and operate facilities anymore. That's not the business we're in, right? Our business is to product amazing products and services for our customer. Do not really worry about you know how to plug in some some cables and things like that. So uh, definitely not. Uh, also, should we have a global customer? Are we running a large scale workload? Do we need a lot of power, a lot of memory, a lot of CPU, a lot of IT resources? Uh, very hard, very expensive uh, to get traditional hardware equipment. Uh, so definitely, uh, cloud could be a place how to get all of these, uh, how to get all of these resources whenever we uh, require them. Lastly, obviously, acquisition could be an interesting factor uh, for cloud migration as well. All right, so hopefully everybody's excited about cloud. <laughs> hopefully everybody's as me uh, excited about cloud. Uh, what are some potential barriers? You know why um, the migration to cloud uh, could be a little bit problematic. Uh, usually, the biggest problem is people. So uh, if we don't have um, if we don't have senior management uh, that's convinced, that excited about cloud migration, uh, it is going to be very hard, very difficult uh, to undergo a migration project. So uh, senior management, senior leadership. Uh, that's something that we definitely want for any successful uh, cloud migration. Uh, imagine that we've already uh, we've already uh, invested a lot uh, into our current infrastructure, so might be quite uh, might be quite difficult uh, to get uh, to, uh, to to simply let it go. All of our investments. Uh, also, maybe we're not too familiar with the cloud. We've got a lot of questions. We're unsure about how things can work you know, with cloud. So we don't have enough ex uh, expertise uh, to be able to go into the cloud. Maybe we're worried about the downtime concerns, especially if you're running uh, critical mission critical applications uh, that cannot um, uh, that cannot uh, have any downtime periods or extended downtime period. So maybe that's our concern. How how do we get all of it? Uh, up and running without, uh, you know, losing our customers. Uh, also, you know, should we have applications spread around, um, might also be problematic for us uh, to uh, to, uh, to to migrate uh, to migrate to the cloud. So these are the typical uh, barriers uh, that we that we see from customers why that cloud migration might be uh, problematic. However. Let's make things work and let's uh, let's get this party started. Let's migrate to cloud and let's use all of the cloud benefits. So um, if you want to successfully migrate to the cloud, what do we need? What is uh, absolutely required from our side? Definitely, as I've already said that before, uh, we need a strong commitment uh, from uh, from senior leadership. Uh, without that, any migration project, uh, it's, it's destined uh, for failure. So we definitely need a senior uh, senior leadership, uh, senior leadership's commitment uh, that uh, will successfully, that will drive the whole migration project. Um, sometimes you might have to undergo some organizational changes. You know, we have to think about uh, what are our operating model, what are our policies, uh, processes, economics. Um, maybe we need to we need to provide some additional trainings uh, for our employees. So. Definitely be ready that some organizational change uh, is very likely uh, to be required. Um, how to do the migration project? Uh, typically, what works the best for uh, customers uh, is to aggregate all of the cloud expertise, all of the cloud knowledge uh, in a single place. Usually, uh, we create something like a cloud center of excellence or cloud team you know you can name it whatever you want uh, the idea is that we will aggregate all the skills all the knowledge in a one central place so now we've got um we can make a decision faster we can move faster you know we can operate faster we don't we don't need to do you know chase people uh from all the different places uh from within the company we've got everything aggregated on a uh, on a single uh place uh as any um, as any project, we definitely need a roadmap. So we need an adoption roadmap. Um, sometimes customers, you know, tend to be super bad. 
say, okay, I know nothing about cloud, but you know, tomorrow I'll know everything and I'll have everything running in the cloud. Um, it's going to be very, very tricky. Uh, what's usually better uh, is to start small, um, iterate. Uh, if you don't have that much experience, definitely experiment as much as possible. Essentially, start small, start as early as possible. You know, ideally yesterday, if not yesterday, well, tomorrow is a good day. I'm uh, sorry, today uh, is the good day uh, as well. So start small, you know, get your hands dirty, uh, start exploring the cloud. So without a practical experience, it is going to be very hard to do it. So start as soon as possible, start small, experiment, learn as much as possible. It's not going to be perfect you know, for, for the first time, but over the time when we build our, our expertise, uh, we should be able uh, to, to migrate successfully and start utilizing you know, more and more uh, of the benefits that the clouds bring us. Uh, it is also very important to you know, not consider cloud as kind of like some you know, other place where I can run my things, uh, but consider all of the benefits that cloud brings us. So, uh, implement the cloud first strategy. Uh, I've seen many projects, many customers that uh, kind of like have the way of thinking, you know, how to run things and now trying to implement, trying to use the same way of thinking, uh, but running on a cloud platform. Would it work? Usually it, it does. Usually you can kind of like bend over cloud so uh, you can still, you know, use the same mindset uh, as, as you had before. Uh, is it effective? Absolutely, uh, absolutely not. Cloud is a great, great platform that provides us many benefits, many opportunities, uh, but we really need to think in this cloud first mode. So we really have to start thinking about how can I utilize everything that cloud brings me, not this is the way I do it, this is where I click, this is what I do, and now how do I do this uh, in uh, AWS? So. Uh, the typical migration process has these four phases. Uh, the first one is the migration preparation and a business planning. Uh, the second one is portfolio discovery and a planning. Uh, then the third process is the actual migration uh, and validation. And definitely we cannot forget the last step, uh, which is the operate step. So uh, are operating in, um, uh, in a cloud environment. Uh, what are some stages of the migration uh, or stages of uh, adoption? Uh, as we've already said, usually we start with the idea that cloud is good. Uh, we, need, we need to create a project, we need to create a plan, we need to create a, a migration team. Uh, then we build the foundations. So we've got the, uh, the foundation stage. We, we set ourselves uh, for success. That's how I like to call it. Uh, then we've got the migration phase. And lastly, we're running in a cloud so we can start uh, re-engineering, we can start re-architecting, uh, or we can start building uh, you know, cl uh, applications, cloud native uh, applications, so start fully utilizing uh, everything that cloud uh, has to offer. Uh, if you're a little bit confused, uh, if you're a little bit scared, you know that there is so much uh, that, that you can do, but how do you do this? Like, it's a huge major project. Uh, how do we do all of that? Don't worry, uh, Cloud is here to help us. I will be talking about several tools and framework uh, that can help us with successful migration. So don't worry, you're not left alone. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of customers that have already successfully migrated to AWS. So fortunately, AWS gather, you know, all of the skills, all of the expertise, and we can take a look uh, and we can, uh, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel again. We can learn from uh, other people's mistakes uh, and we can see what works for, for other people. So uh, we should be able, so we will be, uh, we have the, 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 the best, uh, the, the, the biggest uh, chances of being successful. Uh, there are a couple of tools that I uh, will be discussing. The first one, uh, it's migration readiness uh, and assessment, uh, MRI, MRA. So, uh, the migration readiness assessment uh, is um, migration um, 
uh, migration uh, interview or, or, or workflow, I'm sorry, workshop. Uh, typically, this is done as a one-day uh, workshop. So usually we have uh, an expert from AWS or partner or AWS partner. Uh, they will conduct an interview with a stakeholder. Uh, the purpose of the interview is to verify what, how um, our company uh, is ready uh, to be migrated into the cloud. What do we know about cloud? How are our processes? You know, how, how are we prepared if, if we're supposed to uh, work in the cloud? If we're running in the cloud, uh, how would we be able to, uh, to do that? So one day workshop, uh, ask about different areas. Uh, and the, the purpose of this workshop is to identify our readiness, our cloud migration uh, readiness. Uh, as the result of the workshops, I will see, uh, we'll get a report uh, from, from the expert uh, pointing out some gaps. Uh, so now we'll have the gaps that we can uh, address uh, in, the, uh, in the later stages. Uh, the migration readiness assessment uh, tool or workshop uh, is based on uh, AWS Cloud Adoption Framework. So AWS Cloud Adoption Framework is a framework that's published by AWS. It's a free framework, so uh, anybody can uh, anybody can download it, anybody can read it. Uh, the framework aggregates all of the best expertise, all of the best practices, uh, tips and tricks uh, when it comes to uh, adopting cloud. So if we want to adopt cloud, uh, the, the framework that's definitely a nice place to uh, start. Uh, the framework is organized uh, into six areas. We've got a business area, people or business perspective, people perspective, governance perspective, platform perspective, security perspective, and operation perspective. So as you can see, the framework will help us uh, with a cloud, a mi a cloud migration uh, based on all of these perspective uh, perspectives or all of these uh, areas. Uh, if you're curious about how this, uh, how does this um, migration readiness assessment workshop look like? Uh, so an expert will be conducting an um, uh, interview with us. Uh, there is a little tool uh, that we can use. And here we've got a screenshot uh, of the tool. So for instance, I'm, I'm not sure uh, how easy it is to read the question. I'm sorry, it can be uh, a little bit tiny. Uh, it is from the governance perspective, IT governance perspective, uh, asking about um, if we have some sort of like a centralized support uh, to run a migration operation. We have to rate our, our readiness. At the end, the tool will evaluate our, our overall uh, cloud readiness. So here, this is the outcome uh, of the tool. As you can see, we'll get a nice PowerPoint presentation. I know everybody likes PowerPoints, right? Uh, so that's something that we can take a look at. We also get some Excel spreadsheets, uh, some heat maps. So we'll get uh, plenty of resources uh, that will help us to identify our own cloud readiness and also you know, uh, point us uh, to the areas where we need to uh, spend some time on prior to uh, having uh, successfully migrated uh, to cloud. So that's the outcome. Uh, we'll identify it, we'll have the identified gaps. Uh, so we do not, so ideally uh, we've got the, uh, the plan. We will not have as many you know, roadblocks uh, during the migration and our overall migration journey uh, should be uh, much, much nicer. Now, uh, this slide that you see in front of you is something that you will very frequently see uh, from uh, AWS experts. Uh, essentially, the migration steps, uh, the, the migration process uh, is typically organized uh, into the three areas. So you've got assessment phase, readiness and planning phase, and application migration. So we've just discussed the migration readiness assessment tool, so MRI. As you can see, this is at the very beginning of our migration journey. Uh, how to do uh, and, and uh, how to do an MRI? Uh, so as we know, the MRI will uh, help us to discover our uh, migration gaps. Uh, so we have to. 
schedule a meeting with the migration expert. Uh, the migration expert will uh, take us through the tool, uh, will uh, ask us the question, as we saw in the previous slide, the example of the question. We will evaluate our readiness, and then as the result, uh, we will receive uh, the presentations. We will receive uh, the uh, we will receive the the, uh, the the heat maps, and we will receive additional materials with uh, the gaps uh, discovered. So we've got something to, to focus on uh, in the uh, migration steps in our uh, for migrations. Now. Uh, enough of the MRI. Let's take a look at the, the, ne uh, the next step of, uh, of our migration, uh, which is migration readiness and planning. Uh, as you can see, the, the, as part of this next step, this migration readiness is planning, there are a lot of activities that need to be performed. Uh, these activities, they're not usually performed in sequence. Uh, usually, these uh, activities are performed somehow in, uh, in parallel. So uh, in the second phase, we've got discovery and planning, we've got landing zone, scales, cloud center of excellence, migration business case, security and planning, operation model, uh, migration exp uh, expertise, and migration plan. So that's all part of the second phase of our migration. Uh, the, uh, discovery <clears throat> uh, the discovery and planning uh, is the activity that will help us uh, to discover all the migrations, all the workloads that we have currently running that should be uh, somehow handled uh, with the uh, migration. I, I know it sounds simple, I know it sounds straightforward, like everybody should know what we have running, right? You would be very, very surprised uh, what uh, customers typically discover uh, in this uh, discovery stage. So usually there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of applications that we can safely retire that are not necessary to run anymore. Uh, there are a lot of applications that we can upgrade. There are a lot of applications that we can replace perhaps with some SaaS product offering so we don't have to manage them anymore. So very important stage, very interesting. Uh, usually everybody is, is quite surprised uh, at the end of this uh, discovery uh, stage. Uh, as we can see, ideally at the end of this discovery stage, uh, we should have a backlog of applications uh, that are ready to be migrated uh, into the cloud. Uh, what do we have to discover? Uh, ideally, we have we want to know as much uh, about the application as possible. So we want to know information about application. What's the application about? Who's the owner or who are the different owners? Do we have like a business owner, data owner, etc.? Characteristics of the application. A little bit about architecture of the application. We have like traditional three-tier application and something about infrastructure that's always uh, good to know. Uh, we definitely need to know the information about the server, where is that you know, uh, workload running, virtual server, physical server, and a little bit about the characteristic CPU, RAM, uh, OS, uh, etc. Uh, very interesting is information about the network. So what's the network? Uh, very commonly we use this information from the network part uh, to know the uh, the relationship, the dependencies uh, between applications or application components. Typically, if we have applications that are strongly dependent one another, there's a lot of communication between various uh, various components. Usually, it makes sense to to migrate this uh, together. So, very interesting to know information about network, network traffic, uh, maybe some network rules as well, just so we know um, you know what. What is what is uh, what is uh, good to migrate together? Of course, we cannot forget about the storage, uh, type of storage, capacity of storage, utilization of storage, etc. So essentially, get you know all the information that we can further use uh, to uh, design appropriate uh, architecture in AWS. Now, that's the analysis. Uh, so these are the info that we need. Uh, we've already talked about the info about the app, servers, connection. So we know what's communicating with one another. Uh, we know what needs to stay, uh, you know, with one another. Uh, what needs to stay, uh, what needs to stay in communication uh, with one another. Uh, very, very important. I would definitely want to pay attention to the second point. Uh, is the information about the performance metrics. Uh, what we see very common in the on-prem environment that everything uh, is uh, 
usually the, the resources and on-prem environment have a very low utilization. So typically, you know, we have a big server because, you know, what if there is, what if there is a period of high demand, like how would we want to satisfy our customers? So usually we're like an on-prem environment architecting for the peak. So if we have a peak period, we have enough resources uh, to satisfy our customers. Uh, do we want to do the same thing in the cloud? We still want to architect for peak. Usually we don't. Uh, usually in cloud, we are, um, prefer flexible architecture. So architecture that can automatically scale. So when our demand can meet the, uh, the supply, we do not want to pay for resources uh, that we're not using. Uh, this is very important to know the performance metrics. Uh, usually the migration projects are quite long, quite expensive. We need these kind of like low hanging fruits uh, to be able to uh, to and like sell this uh, to uh, to our stakeholders. Uh, so usually the easiest way how to achieve some cost saving uh, is a correct optimization of uh, resources. So right sizing of resources. Obviously we cannot right size if we don't have uh, performance uh, information. So this is usually the first activity that we do a little right sizing so we can save a little bit of money. And now we've got some you know uh, real results coming out of our migration project. Um, of course, um, any other information that are that would be helpful, uh, also very good to collect them in the uh, in this stage. You've probably heard uh, so much about it already. I know it's it's been talked about uh, for for years now. Uh, essentially, when it comes to choosing a migration strategy for every single workload for every single uh, application uh, that we have. Uh, typically, we can choose from one of these R's, they're usually called R's. Uh, sometimes you hear people talking about six R's, sometimes seven R's, sometimes five R's, sometimes eight R's. Uh, so depending on who you're listening to, uh, everybody has uh, their own idea. Uh, however, usually uh, these are R. The first one, uh, that's very uh, that's very important for our migration project. Uh, it's something that we do not want to migrate at all, so we can retain the migration. Perhaps you know we might want to uh, revisit it in a later stage. Maybe it's too big for us at the beginning, or it simply doesn't make sense to migrate it. So retire it. Do not touch it right now. Uh, the next one, which is always helpful uh, if you want to save up a little bit of money, is to retire decommission application. Usually during the uh, discovery stage, we'll uh, identify plenty of application that you know used to be uh, helpful, used to be valuable in the past, but we're not longer using them anymore. So we can safely retire these applications. Now, uh, when it comes to the, the major chunk of our migration, so what we, what we typically do with, let's say like, 60, 70, 80 percent uh, of our application is rehosting. So rehosting uh, are commonly called as lift and shift. Uh, it's essentially running the same uh, the same application, but uh, running it on a different host. Hence the name rehosting. Uh, typically, it's done in AWS using an EC2 instance. Uh, EC2 instance. It's a virtual uh, web server. So. Very commonly, we have application, let's say, running on VMware in AWS, and we migrate uh, the VMware and run it on an EC2 instance. We make zero changes to the application. We're simply running it on a, a different host. Sometimes, actually speaking about VMware, uh, some customers, if they're heavily invested uh, in VMware the, uh, or other virtualization platform, uh, they can simply extend uh, the environment into the cloud and run the same VMware in AWS. Uh, so that's why we have the next one, the next strategy called relocate. Very common. I'm running VMware on-prem. Now I can just extend my VMware into AWS uh, and there's absolutely nothing that I need to do with my application. Uh, in the VMware, I simply move it to a different, uh, different data center. Uh, this time is going to be our AWS environment. So nothing needed to be done with our migration. Sometimes what's quite helpful, you know, I'm already getting my hands dirty. I'm already working with the application. Sometimes I can do some uh, small updates, small uh, small changes. 
Uh, for that, we've got the next one, which is called replatforming, uh, commonly called as lift and reshape. Uh, this is quite helpful. You know, I'm already, I have this uh, major migration projects. I'm already getting my hands dirty. Why don't I do, you know, maybe upgrade the OS to the later version or upgrade the database or do some, you know, minor changes for the, for the application. Uh, very, very helpful. Sometimes uh, I'm able to find out that, uh, you know, the same applications that, that I'm running, that I'm spending so much time uh, and energy, you know, thinking about how to make everything works, I can simply purchase as the SaaS product offering. So sometimes it's very helpful. Do not worry about migrating the application. Purchases as a SaaS product offering, and I simply, you know, don't have to do anything. So we've got repurchasing, uh, and intentionally I leave this one for for the last because this one uh, is also the one that is uh, the most difficult one uh, to migrate. I would require the most effort from our side, but potentially could also present the most benefits. Uh, so the last one, it's called refactoring, and it 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 really means you know getting my hands dirty, rewriting the code, uh, changing the architecture of the application with the cloud uh, in mind, so the application can you know fully utilize all of the cloud benefits. Uh, the last migration strategy, the refactoring, uh, definitely uh, or potentially offers us the most benefits. You know, I have some old application. I've got this amazing new product uh, that's following, you know, all of the latest trends in IT. So it's good. However, before you get too excited and start refactoring all of your workload, uh, bear in mind that the migration project usually takes usually quite a long time. We need uh, some some results. Uh, and if, if we were to refactor all of the applications prior to or with this migration project, uh, the migration will, will would be done in you know decades or would uh, will simply take forever. So, uh, what we usually do is to identify a few applications that we will start with the refactoring, and majority of applications we just want to move to the cloud as quickly as possible. Once they're in the cloud, now we can start thinking about how to make things uh, better. So these are our seven uh, our seven strategies uh, that we can use with every single uh, workflow, workload or application uh, that we're migrating to, to the cloud. Now, uh, obviously analysis is uh, very, very important. Uh, we have to analyze every single application when it comes to the application itself. So what's the architecture, what's the technological stack, the dependency section is very important. What, what are we depending on? Uh, we have to analyze every application when it comes to business criticality. You know, how frequently is the application used? Is this a mission critical application for our business? If it is, maybe it wouldn't be the, the right candidate as the first application to be migrated uh, to the cloud. How frequently do we use it? Uh, how frequently do we update this application? Uh, what are our plans? What's the what, what's the business? Uh, what are our business plans with the application? Uh, and also about the environments. Are we using multiple environments? Um, do we want to migrate all of the environments, or maybe decommission some environments, uh, or maybe uh, upgrade environments in a different uh, different stages, different uh, different ways? Uh, again, uh, if you're getting too worried about you know doing everything yourself. I don't worry, typically in these migrations projects, uh, we've got plenty of tools, uh, plenty of frameworks uh, that, uh, that we can use. Uh, the first uh, set of tools is something that we would use in this initial uh, step of migration and this uh, anal analyze, analysis uh, phase of migration. Uh, and that would be a tool that would help us uh, to discover all the workloads uh, that are running in our on-prem environment. Uh, we've got plenty of options. There are some tools that are offered directly by AWS. Uh, there are plenty of third-party tools as well. So uh, obviously we should choose the tool that works the best uh, for us. Uh, in general, we'll have two kind of categories. We'll have agent-based tools uh, in which we will need to install an agent onto an every single host uh, that we have in our environment that we're you know, planning on analyzing or we've got agentless tools, which can be quite helpful uh, if we have some sort of virtualization in place, let's say like a VMware. So we can simply 
uh, uh, connect the tool uh, to, the, uh, to our VMware and it can automatically discover everything that's uh, in our uh, environment. So a different, uh, different set of tools. Uh, the tools will help us to discover all the workloads that are running, all the application. Some of the tools also have some advanced capabilities uh, such as the network traffic, discovering, the, the, uh, discovering dependencies, which could be very helpful. So different tools, different features, different options. Definitely, you know, take a look at all of the options or consider all the options that you have, AWS tools or third-party tools, and choose the one uh, that is going to work uh, the, the best. Sometimes some customers, you know, have limitations when it comes to installing third-party application. So maybe the agent-based approach is not, is not possible. Sometimes customers, you know, want to, um, uh, want the tool to have some advanced feature uh, that the agentless tools uh, do not offer. So really, depending uh, on our uh, on our, on the uh, on our use case, uh, depending on our capabilities of using uh, these different tools, uh, choose the one that will work uh, the best. Now, how do I set uh, myself for uh, success? Uh, it is recommended that uh, in the target environment that I'm, I'm migrating to in AWS, I built something which is called a landing zone. So essentially, a landing zone is a structured AWS environment that's utilizing multiple uh, individual AWS accounts. Uh, and this landing zone should be right from the beginning architected using all the AWS best practices uh, which is very helpful because if I have an environment I'm migrating to that's already architected, you know, using all of the best practices, all of the skills, uh, all of the you know tips and tricks uh, from all the customers that have successfully migrated to cloud, I'm simply selling myself for success. I'll have much easier, much better time uh, working in a cloud rather than if I'm you know trying to create everything from the you know green field. I'm, I'm simply starting getting from scratch. And later I discover, okay, maybe that was not the, the best, you know, network design. Maybe that was not the best, you know, security design. So definitely recommended to start in, in an environment already prepared, following uh, the AWS uh, best practices and uh, AWS recommendations. Uh, as we've already talked about, it's very helpful uh, to have a centralized team, unit, division, uh, you know, call it however you want, uh, but have a one single place that aggregates all of the cloud skills and knowledge, uh, which is going to make it much easier for us to uh, rapidly uh, migrate uh, into the cloud. You know, if, if I have people with, a, with uh, the appropriate skills and knowledge, but they're spread around in various different teams, departments, units, uh, et cetera, should I need to migrate something, it's going to be very hard for me to, to kind of like chase, you know, all of them down in all of the different places uh, and figure out how to do something. Very helpful to have this, this scales uh, organized into one central place. Usually I can move much, much, much faster. Uh, also, if I have a sh sh shareholders uh, with uh, uh, power to make decision, organize in this team as well, uh, that's probably the best thing that I can possibly do. Now, not only I have the, the skills and knowledge, I also have a uh, decision-making ability. So I know how to do things and I have somebody uh, who can give me a green light. So definitely it's something that's, uh, that's highly recommended. Uh, when it comes to building the center of excellence, there are many different uh, different approaches. You know, no two companies are the same. So uh, we definitely cannot say, okay, I'm going to do exactly the same as you know my, my competitor did. Uh, different companies, different requirements. Uh, so uh, uh, take a look at you know some of the experiences from the uh, from the customers who've already successfully migrated, learn from it, uh, and and figure out you know what uh, what would be the best uh, suitable option for my uh, particular situation. What's very helpful, or what's very helpful, what's necessary uh, to uh, to have uh, is a migration business case. So migration business case, it's not going to be documented. I'll I'll write once some at some point, and it's going to stay the same the whole time. Uh, usually, migration business case is to document that. I usually start very high level with some rough ideas, rough estimates, rough uh, cost, cost models, cost prediction. And throughout the migration process, 
uh, I continuously refine the document to, to include more level of details, a better estimates, better uh, better predictions. And this, this document is something that's usually very important from right from the beginning. So usually even prior to start, you know, uh, creating some resources in AWS, start doing some analysis, I should have a rough idea if, you know, the moving into the cloud, if that's the right uh, thing for me or not. So usually before all the other activities take place, I start with this very high level business case where I have a rough, very, very rough idea of, you know, how much is it going to cost me to run in a cloud? I can do a little TCO modeling, figure out if the cloud is the right way, the right option for me uh, or not. Uh, and then if, if, I, if I find out that it is, uh, I can, uh, I can, you know, throughout the migration process, refine it uh, because I'll discover more information about my application. I'll do some uh, architecture decision. Uh, maybe I'll do some optimization activities as well so I can refine it. So the, uh, the business case is better uh, and better, but definitely something important and something necessary to have right from the beginning. So the migration of uh, uh, the business case, uh, as we said, uh, it's usually created right from the beginning, and then it is slowly refined uh, after you know using uh, after I'm going through the various phases. Usually, the longer, the further I go, uh, the the better information uh, I have. So I should definitely use this information to you know continuously refine it, so I have better. Um, uh, I have uh, I have uh, yeah. But yeah, better, uh, better information uh, in that. Speaking about migration, we definitely uh, cannot forget the migration plan. So any project uh, that, that's happening in our organization, we definitely need a plan. Uh, we need a project management that will create a plan for that project. Migration is not an exception, so I do need a detailed migration plan. Um, on the slide, you can see some of the uh, uh, some of the um, some some items uh, included in the plan. We've already talking about the cost. That's something that we usually um, identify for our business case. Uh, we have our application. We need the team, the migration team. Uh, we will be talking about you know what are some some strategies when it comes to creating uh, this migration team. All the project management needs to be included and all other you know typical activity uh, when it comes to that so definitely something that's necessary when it comes to migration experience uh, as we said it is very helpful uh, to get our hands dirty as quickly as possible I know some customers you know really like um, you know hire a consultant and reading hundreds of slides of you know of the ideal world uh, how it should look like after a migration you know doing all of these exercises it's it's definitely great but i would say until you've actually you know migrated your first application uh, it is very hard to learn things you know from uh, these very pretty very nice looking powerpoints so i would definitely encourage everybody uh, to start experimenting start uh, figuring out you know how things works as quickly as possible obviously you know don't start experimenting on a critical application uh start working on something maybe just even like a sandbox environment for the beginning and then the first application something that's definitely not critical just so i can see that i have all of the processes uh that um that everything uh, uh is set and everything work correctly i have the right people i have the right tools i have the right skills i have the the right processes so everything works correctly so i need to practice it i need to choose an application that i can practice it on i definitely recommend it to do it as quickly uh, as possible uh you know, migration is great, but I definitely cannot forget like, all right, so I'm going to migrate, you know, 150 workloads to AWS, it's there. I'm going to open up a bottle of champagne, awesome. But what's going to happen now? How, how am I able to, uh, to operate uh, in uh, AWS? Uh, definitely operation, I know in cloud environment differs uh, from the operation uh, in on-premise environment or different place where we are working. So we definitely need to uh, be ready. We need to have the operations team that's able to take the activities from day one. Obviously we cannot 
you know, start migrating workloads in AWS, now, you know, perhaps running in some sort of hybrid environment. I've got some things already migrated to cloud. I've got some things still running in on-prem. And my operation team is completely lost because has no idea I know how to uh, how to concurrently manage uh, both of these uh, environments. So operations very important, very critical. Make sure uh, that our operations team is able to uh, operate at the beginning probably both environments, on-prem and cloud. Maybe over the time uh, only cloud if that's uh, the way that we are going. But definitely, you know, from day one that I'm working in a cloud, I need to have a team that's able to uh, to operate my cloud platform. Uh, again, there are plenty of different framework uh, that we can use. Uh, here is an example of uh, a RASA chart, uh, which is mapping uh, ITIL processes. Um, as you can see, different people, different activities. Uh, so, yeah, definitely, you know, make sure that whatever operations we're doing on-prem, I'm also able to uh, to get all the all uh, all the operations uh, in a cloud as well. So uh, this is about operations team. Uh, definitely, what's a very critical, uh, what's very frequently the customer concerns, uh, what what you know we hear customers asking all the time is security and compliance. Is a cloud secure? How about this compliance? How about GDPR? How about POPIA? How about PCI compliance? How about uh, all the different compliance framework, all the different standards, all <clears throat> uh, regulatory uh, requirements? How do we do with all of that? Uh, let me assure you that cloud is very secure. Uh, we can architect very secure applications uh, in AWS. And also the AWS satisfies plenty uh, of popular compliance framework and uh, different regulatory requirements uh, as well. Uh, saying that, uh, hopefully it made your mind a little bit at ease. Uh, there are plenty of resources, uh, so you can get all of this uh, compliance confirmation uh, directly uh, from AWS. So whatever uh, you're interested, there are some resources uh, that, that that you can use to, to figure out, you know, this uh, these, these, uh, to figure out this compliance world. Uh, when it comes to security. There are plenty of uh, security guidance, security best practices. So obviously, anything that we're doing in AWS security should be our priority. Um, it's uh, this famous statement you've probably heard uh, that security should be, uh, should be a job zero uh, for everybody at AWS and essentially for everybody that's got that's doing anything in uh, AWS. So definitely, we need to have a security in mind. Uh, there are plenty of tools, there are plenty of resources that can help us to build a robust and secure uh, architecture in the, uh, in the cloud. So definitely make sure that we'll, uh, we'll use them and whatever we're doing in the cloud is secured. Uh, when it comes to uh, dividing responsibility <clears throat> uh, between the cloud provider uh, and us, as, as you might expect, you know, sometimes you're probably curious, like, okay, so I'm running my application in a cloud provider in AWS. Is AWS going to do this for me? Or do I have to do this? Is AWS responsible for that? Or is it a mind responsibility? Uh, if you have any questions around, or <laughs> any similar questions, uh, we can find an answer in AWS Shared Responsibility Model. So AWS Shared Responsibility Model is a framework published by AWS. Uh, that clearly divided the responsibility uh, between AWS, the cloud provider, and us uh, as the cloud customer. Uh, this responsibility is going, the, the framework is going to look different for different AWS services. You know, sometimes we have uh, services in AWS uh, that require more management from customers, so we have more flexibility, but also we're responsible for a bigger part of the service. Uh, sometimes we have services uh, that are managed by AWS, uh, so less, uh, you know, things for, uh, for us to, to worry about. Um, AWS will be responsible for more parts of the, the service, so that a responsibility model will uh, will shift depending on the uh, the service. Uh, in general, AWS will always be responsible for security of the cloud, so you know, managing, uh, so making sure that. 
everything works, you know, the data center works, there's internet storage and all of the, the basic, the core component works. And our customers, we will always be responsible for security in the cloud. So whatever data we put inside, whatever services we've provisioned, whatever configuration for the services uh, we, we choose, we will always be responsible for, uh, for that. So this is the cloud frame. This is the shared responsibility model in general. As I said, if you're interested about how this model is gonna look like for service A, service B or service C, go ahead to AWS documentation and you can find exactly you know, what you're responsible for with this service and what you're responsible for for uh, any other services running in uh, AWS. Okay, so uh, when it comes to uh, helping us uh, successfully migrate uh, into the cloud, we've got plenty of uh, migration tools. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have, um, you know, a couple of days uh, or maybe weeks uh, to, uh, to uh, talk about every single one of them uh, in a great detail. Uh, as you can see, we've got the tools that can help us during the assessment phase. Uh, for instance, we've got a tool that can help us to discover our application, discover all the workloads, all the services that we have running, find out the performance, dependencies, uh, network communication, uh, all of that. Uh, we've got then tools uh, that can help us in this readiness and planning phase. So tools uh, helping us to you know, set ourselves for success, uh, build ourselves um, already, uh, build ourselves environment in AWS that's already architected using all of the best practices, uh, automate things, further discover, uh, applications refine uh, our refine our ideas that we had previously. Help us to build, uh, help us to build a business plan. Uh, then we have the then we have plenty of tools that can help us in the migration phase. So actually migrating, actually moving workloads from our cloud to uh, AWS. As you can see, we've got the tools that can help us uh, to move our servers, to move our databases. Uh, we've got tools that can help us to move our data, our entire storage here. Uh, we've got plenty of third-party tools, uh, so we can take use of the uh, very broad AWS Partner Network, um, and you can you know, get a tool from uh, AWS Partner for a special occasion. Uh, when it comes to you know, overall governance uh, and automation, we also have a tool that can help us with that. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we've got plenty of tools for all the migration activities, right from the very first step, you know, creating business plans up until, you know, having actual data uh, being transferred uh, and run uh, in uh, AWS. So anywhere from between, from, from the beginning into the end, uh, there are tools uh, that can help us to migrate. So, uh, what have you talked about uh, in this webinar? What have you learned? Uh, the business case, it's absolutely critical. Uh, as we said, we usually start with the business case prior to doing anything, prior to doing any uh, migration work. Usually we start uh, with a very rough business case that only has you know very high level ideas. So Usually we don't want to at the beginning, we don't want to, to you know, spend too much time you know, going through all of the applications and finding out how much exactly uh, you know, that application needs and that application needs. Usually in the beginning, I just need very, very high level idea uh, to, uh, to, to figure out you know, if this movement into the cloud is something that's, uh, that's right for me uh, or not. Uh, the business case, uh, hopefully I find out, uh, that this movement into the cloud is something that's uh, that's that's right for me. That's the right decision for me. Uh, typically, in the business case, I want to highlight uh, some opportunities uh, that I uh, that I have. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to save um, on an infrastructure. Uh, maybe the migration cost uh, needs to be included there uh, as well, uh, but. The, the business plan uh, should always be focused on uh, the, the most important, the, uh, the, the, the biggest benefit for us. Money, that's, that's good. That's something that's very nice. That's, that's something that everybody likes to hear. 
Uh, but as we said, the biggest benefit of migrating into the cloud, it's probably not, you know, saving a um, couple of percent TCO, but is our uh, agility, our uh, digital transformation, uh, it's improving the uh, it's improving the products and services uh, that we're offering to our, our customers. So if we operate in an environment that's flexible, that's agile, that supports innovation, we can operate much better uh, in this environment. We can pr produce, it, it can offer better products and services for our customers. So usually that's when we gain most out of, uh, most of the value, most out of uh, AWS. Uh, remember, we've talked about uh, various migration strategies. So we've got these uh, six, seven, eight, uh, uh, depending on who are you talking with. Uh, these six are, one more time, are retain, uh, which is to keep application on premise. Sometimes, you know, we don't know what to do with them yet. Sometimes we're using some old technology that, that are some like mainframes that are very hard to move uh, into the cloud. Sometimes we figure out that, you know, the business is not longer planning to use uh, this, this particular migration. So, you know, let's keep it in uh, on-prem. Some of the migration, usually it's quite a bit. We figured out that we no longer using them. They're still running on our server. You know, they're still uh, using resources. They're still taking space but we're no longer uh, using them so we can safely uh, decommission them. This is very good, you know, uh, uh, for our migration project. If you can say like, okay, we've already saved, you know, we've already decommissioned five applications. So we've already saved this much of money. It's really good uh, to have these kind of like low hanging fruit uh, that usually makes the, uh, the, uh, the uh, stakeholders quite happy. Rehosting the application, this is usually the, major part so this is our lift and shift we just take whatever it uh, whatever we have running and we run it on a different host so we run it in uh, aws most likely on uh, on an ec2 instance uh, this is something <clears throat> that will perform for a majority of our application and this is actually something that we can do very fast so if we have all the migration processes, we have all of the tools, we've got the teams that know what to do, we can actually do this rehosting activity very, very fast. Since um, pretty much all of the application in this rehosting categories will be migrated you know, exactly the same way, there's going to be very little differences between migrating application A, B, or C. <clears throat> once we've got all of the processes, once we've got everything set in place, uh, we can migrate things very, very quickly. Uh, the next one is the replatform. Uh, as we said, replatforming is about uh, making some minor changes, adjustments, upgrades, you know, patches, uh, et cetera. Uh, as you can see, it's also presented quite a bit. Uh, usually it's quite helpful, again, um, to, uh, since you know we're already getting our hands dirty with the application, why don't we make it you know a little bit uh, a little bit better? Again, uh, that usually helps. Uh, that that usually helps our whole migration project. Again, we, we're getting some benefits, right? Not only we just simply take it from place A uh, to the place B, everything is the same, but you know we've made it better. We made it more secure, more modern, etc. Now, the next category, and be aware of it, I know this is the category that, you know, potentially brings us the most benefit. Uh, we can, you know, uh, redesign amazing solutions. However, it can also take quite a lot of time. So in the migration, uh, in the migration process, usually we want to gain some speed and we want to keep the momentum going. We don't want to this migration project, you know, take for decades because we're, you know, rebusing writing, you know, miles of, uh, of code. I really want to get the momentum and get things up and running as quickly as possible. So refactoring, uh, it's good, but only identify a few applications. Um, and then definitely, uh, you know, re-architect the solution uh, with a cloud in mind, uh, this cloud native application, so we can get most uh, out of that. Uh, and the last one is the repurchase. Again, you know, if we figure out that uh, not everything we have to run, manage, patch, maintain uh, ourselves, sometimes we can just consume the product as a SaaS offering. 
uh, from, uh, from a SaaS partner, then again can definitely help us. We can focus uh, on our critical application and some of these you know, products we don't, don't no longer want to, uh, no longer need to manage, uh, but consume it as SaaS. So uh, we've got the great purchase. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's it. Uh, that's our that's our webinar. Uh, I'm hoping that you've enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, there is much more when it comes to uh, migration. Uh, the migration projects are big. The migration projects are uh, expensive. Uh, but don't worry, you know, you're not left alone. There are hundreds of thousands of AWS customers uh, that have already successfully migrated in AWS. Uh, so definitely, you know, you don't have to um you don't have to uh you know um start from the scratch and learn from your own mistakes uh, you can learn from mistakes that you know somebody else made already uh so definitely uh use all of the resources uh and i'm sure you'll have a successful migration uh when it comes to you know more information uh there's plenty uh to learn uh their official aws training portal is a skill builder uh, skillbuilder.aws uh, there are plenty of migration courses there are even classroom based courses there are some online courses some free courses premium based content uh, so there's plenty of information plenty of resources uh, you can find all this information on aws website so tons and tons of interesting things to do uh, obviously uh best it's to learn from expert uh so as i said uh there is actually a classroom course migration to aws so should you want to know uh should you want more information more training uh about migration uh definitely go ahead and check check it out uh and there's also the migration ramp up guide uh, which can like summarizes all of the different uh resources Again, if you're interested uh, in any of these, uh, definitely go ahead, give it a shot. There are plenty of information available. Uh, there are plenty of uh, interesting frameworks, you know, very cool tools uh, that can help us, guidance, uh, et cetera. So many, uh, plenty of information available. Definitely make use of it. Uh, and I'm very sure that uh, you'll have a successful migration project. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's all for me. Uh, I think we also, we have a little bit of time. So maybe if uh, there are any questions from, uh, from anybody, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, uh, to send the questions and, uh, and I will be very happy to, to address them. So if anybody has any questions, please uh, feel free to send your questions. Uh, and I will be very happy to address them. So I don't see, uh, I see a lot of thank you messages, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any questions I could address. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope, I'm hoping uh, that it's been valuable uh, an hour uh, and a half uh, that you got something uh, out of it. As you know, there's much more when it comes to migration. So it was kind of like a sneak peek uh, into migration and AWS. We've talked about all the different resources that are available to you. Uh, so definitely, you know, make, make use of them uh, so you can continue uh, and you can have a successful uh, migration to AWS. So thank you so much. Uh, that's it for me. I shared my LinkedIn profile. So should anybody wish to uh, stay in touch with me, uh, find me on LinkedIn, uh, send me your question, uh, and I'll be very happy to uh, to, uh, to stay in touch with you even after this webinar. So thank you so much. My name is Thomas uh, and uh, I wish you the best today uh, and very successful migration. Thank you so much and goodbye.